This video is a review of the basic concepts of complex numbers. So complex numbers are those which are going to involve i, which is the square root of negative 1. So in general, a complex number will have some real part, a, plus some imaginary part, b times i, where both a and b are real numbers, so real number being something that we think about in terms of everyday numbers, some value between negative infinity and positive infinity. And then multiplying some real number times i makes that an imaginary number, which is some real number times i. So in general, a complex number having some real and imaginary part, uh, we have some interesting properties to work with. So since i is defined as the square root of negative 1, i squared, of course, is going to be negative 1. Then i to the fourth will equal 1. And also, interestingly, uh, i cubed will be equal to negative i. Okay, so these numbers are all what we would call complex, sometimes indicated by this type of c with an extra vertical line inside the loop there. Right. We also can define the real and imaginary parts of those in terms of the entire number. So the real component of C would be A, and that's equal to 1 half times the complex number plus its complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate of a complex number is indicated by a little asterisk or star up in the top right hand corner. This shows up a lot in quantum mechanics. And that's just defined as the number and then you switch the sign on the imaginary part. So if C, our complex number is A plus BI, then its complex conjugate is A minus BI. So you can show by substitution that this real part of C has to be equal to A. And then the imaginary part of C, B, is going to equal 1 over 2 times I times C minus its complex conjugate. Right. Another interesting property of note would be the magnitude of a complex number. So in general, for some real number, the magnitude of it would just be its absolute value. But in general, what we look at for complex numbers is we think about them as being kind of vectors that are pointing away from the origin in this complex plane. So we have the x-axis being the real component. So all real numbers fly are along this x-axis here from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we have this imaginary axis for the y-axis, as I've indicated there, the value of b. So all purely imaginary numbers lie along this y-axis from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then a number that is complex will be somewhere in this plane of real and imaginary components. So the magnitude of it you can think about is kind of the length of that vector from the origin in the complex plane. So there, going back to thinking about the magnitude of it, it's not just the absolute value anymore, but it's more like the Pythagorean theorem treating this like the hypotenuse of a triangle here. So we know if this was a triangle, we would find its length by a squared plus b squared and then take the square root. So the magnitude of our complex number, or its absolute value, is equal to the square root of its real part a squared plus its imaginary part b squared. So the <clears throat> square of our complex number's magnitude is equal to a squared plus b squared. And you'll notice from, if you remember from algebra, we can factor this polynomial as a plus bi times a minus bi. And this is equal to the number c times its complex conjugate c star. So the, the square magnitude of a number is equal to itself times its complex conjugate. And this comes up in quantum mechanics a lot because there's a lot of things where we have, you know, so, some function it's complex conjugate times itself. As I mentioned there, x squared plus y squared in general equals x plus i y times x minus i y. Okay, so mention, going back to this graph over here again, we have some complex number here. If I have a positive a and a positive b would be in this quadrant. Its magnitude is the distance from the origin. 
So there, it's complex conjugate. I would switch the value of b from positive to negative. C star is over here. If I wanted the negative of it, I would switch the sign of a and b, which would go over to this quadrant, negative c. And if I wanted to take the complex conjugate of that, switching the sign on b again, we'd go from negative to positive. So that goes from negative b up to positive b for negative c star. Yep, if your, if your imaginary part is zero, then you are purely a real number. If your real part is zero, you are a purely imaginary number. As I said there, the negative is equal to negative a minus bi. If we want to add two complex numbers, then we take their uh, the real part as we add their real components. The imaginary part is we add their imaginary components, then multiplying by i. If we want to multiply two of them, then we would do a foil, first outside and our last, on the multipl multiplication of those two. So you get a1, a2, minus b1, b2 for the real part, plus a1, b2, plus b2, a1 for the imaginary part in the, their product.